past. You know, Jesus has always been. He's always been God the Son. And uh, so that, that's where we start. And he's the creator, the Bible says. Without him was not anything made that was made. Uh, in the Old Testament, Jesus was prophesied the, the coming of the Messiah. They say there's at least 300 different prophecies about the Messiah, and Jesus fulfilled them all. Well, then last week, or, or two weeks ago, we looked at the incarnation, uh, when Jesus, when God became flesh and dwelt among us. Uh, we looked at his birth, his life, his death, resurrection, his ascension. And uh, then last week, we looked at what Jesus is doing now. You, you know, we often think about what he did and what he's going to do. Uh, but right now, Jesus is reigning. He's at the right hand of the Father. Uh, he, the Bible says he's preparing. In John 14, it, it says, if I go and prepare a place, I will come again. And uh, that's, that's the next thing in, in the, the order of things. But Jesus, at this present time, is also serving. We saw how he's our great high priest. He prays for us. Uh, he, helps, he helps us and uh, is serving as our great high priest. Well, Jesus is coming again. If you turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 this morning, now I've been told that joy to the world is actually about the second coming. Now, you, you have a look at the words and things, see what you think. We, we always sing it at Christmas, uh, and it's good to sing it at, at Christmas. But when Jesus uh, said that he's preparing a place, one of the things he said is he's preparing that to bring us to it. You know, as Christians, he's coming to receive us unto himself. When, uh, when the disciples saw Jesus ascend, they were standing watching, and the angel said, why, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Jesus is coming again. And it's interesting that almost the last verse in the Bible, it's Revelation 22, verse 20. There's only 21 verses. He says, Surely I come quickly. Uh, that's his message. Jesus is, is coming again. Uh, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, let me read verse, uh, starting in verse 13, down through the end of the chapter. We want to look at the subject. What will, Jesus, uh, what will Jesus do? Well, one of the things he'll do is he'll return. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And it's talking about the word sleep there. He's talking about death. And it says he's, uh, he's going to bring them with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. You know, for Christians, uh, it's an encouragement. It's a comfort to think that Jesus is coming again. Uh, he uses those words in verse 17, caught up. If you happen to read the Latin New Testament, it would use the word rapture. Uh, that's the word rapture there. And uh, that's where we, we get that expression. Uh, Christians are going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. What a blessing. And you know, that's an encouragement because we're going to be safe. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9, he says, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together. Uh, we're going to be safe because the Lord is going to catch us up to be with Him. 1 Thessalonians 1, verse 10 says, We're to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Uh, what a blessing it is to know that Jesus is coming again. We'll be safe because we'll be caught up to be with Him. We'll not only be safe, we'll be changed. Now, I, I don't know what you think of how you are right now, but uh, God describes us as having a vile body. Now, I don't know, Philippians 3, verses 20 and 21, he says, Our conversation, that's our, our way of living is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we're looking for Jesus to come again, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, 
according to the working whereby he's able even to subdue all things unto himself. What a blessing. Uh, we're going to be changed. Uh, in 1 Corinthians, he says it's going to happen in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51. I show you a mystery. Now, in, in the New Testament, mysteries are things that we, we didn't understand, and God says, here's, here's the truth of it. Here's, he's given us the, not just the clues, but the understanding of it. We shall not all sleep. That's, we're not, all, not everybody's going to die, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And this corruptible, there's that vile body, shall, must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. And what a blessing to know. Jesus is coming again. We'll be safe. We'll be changed. No, no more mortal body. No more corruptible body. All the, the problems of the flesh. As well, the Bible says we will be rewarded. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Man, we're covering a lot of subjects right here, and I'm just, just touching on them. But uh, the Bible says that there's going to be the judgment seat of Christ for Christians. 2 Corinthians 5, 10. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. And I can tell you, in 1 Corinthians 3, the Bible tells us that this judgment for Christians is for reward. It's not deciding whether someone goes to heaven or not. This is for Christians. Now they're gonna, we're going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And he explains in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 13, he says, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is, if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Just talking about Christians here. And not, every, not all of us are going to have rewards. Some of us are going to have uh, wasted our time and not served the Lord the way we should have. Uh, so there won't be reward, but we'll, uh, we'll be saved, he says, yet so as by fire. Not, not the best way to... Uh, to uh, enter eternity, but uh, eternity nonetheless. In, um, in 1 Peter 4 and other places, it, it talks about the crowns that we're going to receive. And the Bible says we're going to cast those crowns at Jesus' feet. Uh, what a blessing to see that uh, we'll be rewarded, uh, we'll be changed, we'll be safe. And as well, the Bible says we're going we're to be married. <laughs> you know, mar marriages are exciting times, and the Bible says that we're the bride of Christ. Revelation 19, for instance, it talks about the, the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. We're the wife. <laughs> That's a strange thing, isn't it? We're the bride of Christ, the Bible says. Uh, in Ephesians, he talks about you know, comparing uh, our human marriages with uh, Christ and, and his bride, and he says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Uh, eternity. Jesus coming again. Uh, there's, there's so many good things. And the Bible says that Christ's return uh, is in two parts. It's interesting to, to look at this. It's all part of the second coming. The first is the rapture uh, that we looked there at in Ephesians, uh, or, I'm sorry, in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, how that we'll be caught up. He comes for his saints, the Bible says. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet, uh, together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh, we meet Him in the air. He comes for His saints. That's a comfort. That's a blessing for us as Christians. All those things we've talked about. But the, the second part of it, the Bible says He comes with His saints. Uh, the, the marriage supper of the Lamb and the marriage and the, uh, the judgment seat of Christ, that takes place in heaven while the tribulation is going on down in earth, on earth. And... Uh, at the end of that time, the Bible says, for instance, in Jude 14, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. We come with him at the second part of the second coming. And let me tell you, that's a warning to non-Christians. Jesus is coming again. While it's a comfort to, to Christians, it's a warning. It's a, it's a, it's a scary thing for, uh, for people that don't know Christ. You know, I've talked to people who, who've said, well, yeah, when... Uh, when Jesus comes again or when I stand before God, I'm going to say this and I'm going to say that. Listen, people will have nothing to say. 
People will be silent before Him. And the Bible says every knee shall bow, every tongue can confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh, not only will they not have anything to say, they'll know they're wrong and they'll admit they're wrong. Why not do it now? Why not trust Jesus Christ as your Savior now? Uh, turn to uh, Revelation 19, if you would, and verse 11. You now, we think of you know, Christmas, we think of Jesus coming, and, uh, but His second coming is going to be very different. Let me just read this. I won't need to make a lot of comment. Jesus is coming to take Christians to be with Him. He's also coming to judge both Christian and, and non-Christian. Revelation 19, verse 11. It says, I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. This is Jesus. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Very different entrance than his first coming. So obscure in, a, you know, in Bethlehem. The Bible even had to make sure we knew it. Bethlehem of, of, of Ephrata, you know. There's lots of Bethlehems. It was that Bethlehem. Very obscure. Uh, some shepherds come and, and take note. The angels announce it but to the shepherds. This second coming, it, boy, it's going to be very different. Uh, it won't be obscure at all. In fact, the Bible says every eye shall, shall see him. And you know, the, the Bible says he's coming uh, to judge. When, uh, when Paul was preaching at Athens... He made this comment uh, to them. Let me just read this one verse. He says, Because he, that's God, hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. He's talking about Jesus. Wherefore he hath given assurance unto all men and that he hath raised him from the dead. The resurrection is God's guarantee. Jesus is coming again and Jesus will judge. He'll be the judge. His word uh, will be the standard. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and uh, verses 1 through 3, it talks about uh, those, those days. And he says, Of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And the Bible says when, uh, when we're taken out, the tribulation will commence. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, uh, growing up, I always thought of the tribulation as Satan, you know, what he was doing on earth. But you know, in Revelation 6, it describes this as the wrath of the Lamb. This is the wrath of God upon earth. Revelation 6, uh, the end of verse 16, he says this is when people are going to, they're going to ask the rocks to fall on them. Uh, they're going to say... Um, Hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? God's wrath. When Jesus comes again, uh, there's going to be uh, wrath upon the earth. Uh, 2 Thessalonians describes it as God's vengeance. You know, in Romans, he tells us, don't, don't seek vengeance. He says, wrath is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. You know, for us, vengeance is wrong. Not for God. It's the right thing for God to, to deal with sin. In uh, 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 7, he says that, get the right chapter, You who are troubled, rest with us from the Lord, uh, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. You know, there's religions that teach that you can earn your way out of hell and go to heaven. Listen, that's not what the Bible says. He says it's everlasting uh, destruction. And uh, we need to be warned. Uh, we need to be telling people Jesus is coming again. While it's comfort for Christians, uh, it's, a, it's a very strong warning uh, for non-believers. 
There's a great day coming. We used to sing that song. There's a great day coming. Are you ready if the Lord should come? The Bible also talks about the great white throne judgment. Now, this is, this is later on. I'll just mention it. But uh, this is only the lost. You know, the, um, the judgment seat of Christ is only for the saved. Later on, after the, uh, the millennium, uh, Revelation chapter 20 talks about God judging the lost. Let me just read some of the verses. It's a, it's a good pa a passage you need to know where it is. Revelation 20, verse 11. It says, I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose faith the, face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Now that's an interesting thing, because the Bible says you can't be saved by works. So this is only the lost. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works. So no matter how good a works a person has done, when you're judged by your works, you'll fail the test. It says, the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. What a sad time that's going to be. Uh, this is a judgment where their names won't be in the book of life, but God's going to confirm it. God's going to judge them by their works. He gave them opportunity. He gave them uh, His Son. He did everything necessary for their soul's salvation, uh, but they refused. Only the lost and unsaved at this judgment. But you know, before that judgment comes, Jesus will rule. There's some amazing things in Scripture that are coming up. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, it just talks about the fact that, that He's a ruler. Uh, 1 Timothy 6, uh, uh, 15, which in His times He shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, King of kings and Lord of lords. And, uh, you know, after the tribulation, God sets up the millennium. Uh, we use that term because it just means thousand years. Jesus will rule. We'll rule with him for a thousand years. And you know, the amazing thing is that at the end of that time, people will rebel against the Lord. And I meet people like this all the time, who in, with their words, they say they're Christians. But in their heart and in their actions, they don't trust the Lord. And you know, when we stand before God, there'll be no excuse. You know, if we say, well, Lord, if you had just, you know, if you just made it right on here on earth, if things had just been good, well, listen, people are going to go through the millennium. Things are going to be good. Adola's picked out where she wants to rule. A uh, place over there in Western Australia, if it's still there, but anyway. Uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a great time. But when we get to the end of it, many of those people are going to rise up in rebellion against the Lord. You know, there's others who say, well, Lord, if you'd just given us all the rules, we could have kept the rules. Listen, you ever read the Ten Commandments? There's plenty of rules, and God says we can't keep them. <laughs> We can't be saved by keeping the law. We, we just break them. God's made every situation. He's going to make every situation uh, possible that we would, might call for an excuse, and it won't work. It's only by the blood of Jesus Christ that we can be saved. Jesus will rule, and in the future, uh, Jesus will come again. We'll all be held accountable for what we've done with Jesus Christ. Every one of us. You know, we love John 3, 16. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What a great verse. But you know, that chapter ends with this verse. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. See, without Jesus, we... we all that's left is God's vengeance, God's wrath. We need Jesus. Jesus will come again. Now, this is not everything, and, and I, I don't know everything, but the Bible leaves us with this understanding. There will be no excuse when Jesus comes again. The Bible says even the heavens declare the glory of God. What does man do? He denies it. Oh, that's not the glory of God. That's millions of time and chance and nothing, and all this came, came about. What foolishness. We've seen some of the things that Jesus will do. Well, what should we do? What should be our response? Well, let me say this. If you're not saved, be born again. Make sure. Make sure that you're trusting the Christ of the Bible. Jesus could come today. 
Now, for Christians, we sing glad day. <laughs> Jesus could come today for the unsaved. It's a bad day. It's going to be a bad day, a sad day. But if you're saved, let, let me just give you a few things here this morning. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, he encourages us to stand fast. 2 Thessalonians uh, 2, verse 15 2 Thessalonians 2.15 says, Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you've been taught, whether by, our, by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Stand fast. Now hold on to, to the Lord Jesus Christ, to the gospel. Uh, the way we do that is by faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. In 2 Corinthians 1, 24, he says, For by faith you stand. Uh, you've probably heard of the, uh, the armor that he talks about in Ephesians chapter 6. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the wicked day, in the evil day. The helmet of salvation, and the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and you know, the shield of faith, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Stand fast by faith. Uh, stand for him. Stand with him. Stand by faith. Then 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 10, don't quit. Keep standing. Sometimes the best thing you can do is just to keep standing. Uh, you know, you may not be running. You may not be, feel like you're accomplishing much, but just, just keep standing. 2 Thessalonians 3, 10. Now, I want to read this whole thing because I want you to see the context here. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. You say, why is he reading that? For we hear that there are some, uh, some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Now my understanding is this, that there is people who, who decided, well, Jesus is coming again, so I'm just going to quit working. I don't have to work. Jesus is coming again. <laughs> uh, listen, don't quit. Stand fast. Keep doing what you know is right. You know, keep brushing your teeth. <laughs> keep taking showers. You know, keep going to work. Uh, keep telling people about Jesus Christ. We're living probably in the end times. You know, things are going on. We think, man, this, this is about it. But don't give up. Don't quit. Don't think, oh, well, Jesus, he could come tomorrow. Uh, I'm taking a break. <laughs> Keep on. You told those people, if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. I guess if you don't want to do anything, don't eat. You'll, you won't not do anything very long, I think is the way to say it. Uh, don't quit. Keep doing what you know is right. I, I'm told that's the cure for depression. Just keep doing what you know is right. Problem is we should start quitting things. Thirdly, live a holy life. You know, we live in a wicked world, and it's easy to judge how we live by the people around us. And think, well, I'm, I'm doing better than they are. But they're not our standard. Listen, parents, how you grew up is not your children's standard. <laughs> I've heard people say, well, I can't tell my kids that because I used to do it. Listen, you're not the standard. Jesus is the standard. God's word is. Uh, and in 1 John chapter 2, verse 28, very pointed verse, it says, Now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. You know, just do what you know is right. Don't be doing something that if Jesus were to come, you'd think, oh, man, caught. Some shameful thing. Now, live a holy life. Now, later on in 1 John 3, verse 2, he says, When he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Jesus is coming again. And when he does, we'll be like him. Let's start working at it now. <laughs> Let's start practicing now, being like Jesus, living a holy life. Now, 2 Timothy 2, he says, If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. That should be our goal. Now, we're going to fail. We're going you know, to do wrong. Well, throw the vessel in the, in the dishes. You know, get, it, get it cleaned up. Uh, try to live a, a holy life. Live for Jesus. And then... When people that you know need to be saved. Jesus is coming again. Uh, all of us probably have lost loved ones. 
relatives and family and friends. Man, the time is short. And the Bible makes this statement, they shall not escape. Man, that's a stark statement, isn't it? People without Christ will go to hell. You know, the world would mock us if, if they heard us say that. But it's the truth. If you believe that Jesus is the Savior, you, believe that, you, you have to believe that people without Jesus are not saved. The time is short. They shall not escape. You know, as you think about Jesus coming, as Christians, we're encouraged. Man, I'm going to be glad to be out of this vile body. I'm going to be glad to be out of this vile world, you know. Things going on, oh man, you get, you get sick of it. We can be encouraged. Jesus is coming again. What a blessing. But don't be selfish with it. There's people around us that are not saved. And we need to be warning them. Uh, we need to take the risk that they may not like what we have to say. Jesus is coming again. You know, a person without Jesus will be judged and rightly condemned. You know, the, the Bible says all have sinned. It says the wages of sin is death, separation from God. But you know, with Jesus, we'll be forgiven. Uh, we'll be safe for eternity. What a blessing to think of that. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, God sent His Son. He came to be the Savior. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. If you found Him, man, you found uh, the most precious thing uh, in this whole world. And we need to make sure that we're, we're sharing it with others. You know, it's as simple as admitting that we're sinners, like God says. Believing that Christ died and rose again for our sins and calling upon Him to save us. It's as simple as receiving a gift. You just have to receive it. And we do it by faith because it's not a physical thing. It's a spiritual thing. Do you have Jesus? Let me ask you, why would you go home without him? <laughs> he created you. He, he proved his love to you by coming and living and dying for you. Provided the remedy for your sin. Uh, we read in 1 Thessalonians, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Uh, he rose again and offers eternal life. Jesus is coming again. Will you be ready? Will you be ready? Uh, let's go to the Lord in, in prayer with our, our heads bowed and in an attitude of prayer. Maybe the Lord is, is speaking to you. Maybe you're wasting your time when you should be serving the Lord. Maybe you're not sure about your soul's salvation and you need to find out uh, from God's Word how to be saved. Father, thank you so much for your Word that speaks to our hearts. Uh, Lord, we ask the Holy Spirit to, to help us. Father, if there are, are those here this morning that are not saved, I just pray that you'd bring conviction. Uh, bring us to a, the place of, of repentance. Help us to trust you by faith. Lord, as Christians, help us to live for you and to live for eternity. God, thank you for all the things that you're bringing in our lives that we might, might uh, put them to the test of faith. Thank you for your word, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.